Uh, Peter Whittle joins me in the studio, uh, the founder of the New Culture Forum. Peter, a very, very good evening to Morning, you. Welcome. Um, Afternoon. Evening. Evening. Even. Evening. Yeah, I know. It's hard to keep up, isn't it? Um, it's all kicking off in, in Dublin. We've got mm. migration things to talk about. We've got the whole situation with, um, with the hostages to talk about as well. Let's just start with, with what's happening in Dublin. Mm. Lots of people cr uh, crying out and saying, you know, enough is enough. They've had a big problem with migration in mm. Dublin um, and in, in, in the Republic of Ireland over and the last few years, haven't they? Yes, and op opposition to it. I think, yeah. as you quite you know, rightly pointed out, we don't... We're not confirmed yet mm. as to, you know, the... the we don't know if, the if the assailant is indeed as he has been painted. We always have to say that, but in a way, it's beside the point, because when you have a situation like we have now, and I know we're going to talk about migration figures, but when yeah. you have a situation uh, which is as heightened as it is, and when people feel, I would say, powerless mm. as well, when they don't feel listened to quite rightly, and they should be listened to on these issues, yeah. um, they start to jump to conclusions. And... Frankly, there's a fair amount of ground for the conclusions yeah. they jump to. Well, I mean, let's just see Suella Braverman's statement tonight. She obviously was Home Secretary and saw very recently. She laid out what she wanted to do in order to try and stop the flood of people coming in, both legally and illegally. Um, she says tonight that uh, the immigration figures that we've seen coming into Britain, 725,000 um, nets, yeah. if you like, um, basically is a slap in the face of the British public and she said, when is somebody going to say enough is enough? Well, people said enough is enough a very long time ago, right? What it is, it's the government and it is the civil service and all of these people, they're the ones who have to call a halt to it. Your average person in the street thought enough was enough a long time ago, Mike. The fact is people have, over the past 30 years nearly, they have never, ever been consulted about what has amounted to a major change mm. in the nature of their country. Right. And it's becoming clearer and clearer. In fact, it's sort of speeding up. I think what woke a lot of people up were those demonstrations that we saw recently in London. Yes. You know, the big demonstrations. Well, I think that's kind of galvanised a lot of people, yes. hasn't it? Because people have said, this doesn't look like the London that I knew. This doesn't look... You and I have had this conversation yeah. before. Yeah. You know, these people rampaging through London, particularly the weekend of Armistice Day. Mm. You know, this does not look like a British protest. Yes, it wasn't actually just about uh, Gaza, pa uh, Palestinians and, and Israel. It was also a, a complete disregard, an insult to British traditions. Yes, yeah, totally. In that case, remembered... By people who clearly couldn't give a stuff about British traditions. Uh, if that's even if they know much about yeah. it. Yeah. Um, they're not encouraged to know anything about it. Mm. Um, I think the thing is, right, that, that when you see these these kind of figures, and the one from last year was, has now been revised up, so the latest one we have will doubtless be revised up again. These are net figures. Yes, Remember of course. That? Yeah. Net figures. Uh, we very rarely get told about the sort of people who are actually leaving. Um, almost never get to hear about that. Uh, these are net figures. 1.2 million, I think, gross. Yeah. Which um, it was last year as well, wasn't it? Exactly. Yeah. These, um, if we want our country to survive in any recognisable form, this simply has got to stop. I yeah. mean, basically, I think all mass migration should be ended, at least for a period. Yes, I think so. We'll come back to uh, Peter Whittle joins me in the studio, uh, the founder of the New Culture Forum. Peter, a very, very good evening to Morning, you. Welcome. Um, Afternoon. Evening. Evening, <laughs> even. Yeah, I know. It's hard to keep up, isn't it? Um, <laughs> It's all kicking off in, in Dublin. We've got mm. migration things to talk about. We've got the whole situation with, um, with the hostages to talk about as well. Let's just start with, with what's happening in Dublin. Mm. Lots of people cr uh, crying out and saying, you know, enough is enough. They've had a big problem with migration in mm. Dublin um, and in, in, in the Republic of Ireland over and the last few years, haven't they? Yes, and op opposition to it. I think, yeah. as you quite you know, rightly pointed out, we don't... We're not confirmed yet mm. as to, you know, the... the we don't know if, if the assailant is indeed as he has been painted. We always have to say that, but in a way, it's beside the point, because when you have a situation like we have now, and I know we're going to talk about migration figures, but when yeah. you have a situation uh, which is as heightened as it is, and when people feel, I would say, powerless mm. as well, when they don't feel listened to quite rightly, and they should be listened to on these issues, yeah. um, they start to jump to conclusions. And, frankly, there's a fair amount of ground for the conclusions yeah. they jump to. Well, you I mean, know? let's just see Suella Braverman's statement tonight. She obviously was Home Secretary and saw very recently. She laid out what she wanted to do in order to try and stop the flood of people coming in, mm. both legally and illegally. Um, she says tonight that uh, the immigration figures that we've seen coming into Britain, 725,000 um, nets, yeah. if you like, um, 
basically is a slap in the face of the British public. And she said, when is somebody going to say enough is enough? Well, people said enough is enough a very long time ago, right? What it is, it's the government and it is the civil service and all of these people, they're the ones who have to call a halt to it. Your average person in the street thought enough was enough a long time ago, Mike. The fact is people have, over the past 30 years nearly, they have never, ever been consulted about what has amounted to a major change mm. in the nature of their country. Right. And it's becoming clearer and clearer. In fact, it's sort of speeding up. I think what woke a lot of people up were those demonstrations that we saw recently in London. Yes. You know, the big demonstrations. Well, I think that's kind of galvanised a lot of people, yes. hasn't it? Because people have said, this doesn't look like the London that I knew. This doesn't look... You and I have had this conversation yeah. before. Yeah. You know, these people rampaging through London, particularly the weekend of Armistice Day. Mm. You know, this does not look like a British protest. Yes, it wasn't actually just about uh, Gaza, uh, Palestinians and, and Israel. It was also a, a complete disregard, an insult to British traditions. Yes, yeah, totally. In that case, remember... By people who clearly couldn't give a stuff about British traditions. Uh, if that's even if they know much about yeah. it. Yeah. Um, they're not encouraged to know anything about it. Mm. Um, I think the thing is, Mike, that, that when you see these these kind of figures, and the one from last year was, has now been revised up. So the latest one we have will doubtless be revised up again. These are net figures. Yes, Remember of course. That? Yeah. Net figures. Uh, we very rarely get told about the sort of people who are actually leaving. Um, almost never get to hear about that. Uh, these are net figures. 1.2 million, I think, growth. Yeah. Which it was last year as well, wasn't it? Exactly. Yeah. These, um, if we want our country to survive in any recognisable form, this simply has got to stop. I yeah. mean, basically, I think all mass migration should be ended, at least for a period. Yes. Welcome back to the Independent Republic. Israel's war on Hamas has sparked suspected hate preaching in a number of Britain's mosques. A talk TV investigation today reveals footage of preachers in several mosques calling for Jews to be killed and Israel to be destroyed. We've handed our dossier of evidence to police and officers from three forces are now actively investigating. Uh, here's Holly Hudson with an exclusive report which comes with a warning that some of you, some of you may find its content offensive. <laughs> A sermon at the Red Bridge Islamic Centre in Ilford. The speaker prays with his congregation in Arabic to curse the Jews and the children of Israel. Talk TV had the recording translated twice independently. It's voiced by an actor. Oh Allah, curse the Jews and the children of Israel. Oh Allah, curse the infidels and the polytheists. Oh Allah, break their words, shake their feet, disperse and tear apart their unity, and ruin their houses and destroy their homes. And from London to Liverpool. If the three billion just marched on Israel, it's all over. Do you spot in the direction of Israel? Two billion, it's all over. To Birmingham. The stones, the stones will speak and say, Oh Muslim, behind me there is a Yahudi, come and kill him. Preachers at mosques across Britain have been filmed calling for victory for Hamas. Oh God, heal our hearts regarding the usurping Jews and in every enemy of you and the Muslims. Oh God, limit their number, kill them indiscriminately and do not leave any of them alive. Oh God, our Lord, disperse them, weaken their strength, shake the ground beneath their feet, and freeze the blood in their veins. Make them captive to the Muslims. And stoking hatred against Jews and Israel with alarming anti-Semitic rhetoric. Our revenger, revenge from the oppressive aggressor occupying Zionists. O oh Allah, shake the earth beneath them. O oh Allah, limit their number, kill them indiscriminately and do not leave any of them alive. Rhetoric that in some cases is as violent as that of Abu Hamza, the known hate preacher who delivered sermons at Finsbury Park Mosque before it was shut down and who was deported from the UK. In Greenwich, this speaker ended his prayers with calls for Allah to grant victory over the enemy. The Met said while it understands the footage raised concern in Greenwich, no offences had been committed there. Jewish groups, though, say that police aren't doing enough and are calling for prosecutions in some cases, warning that some of these sermons could lead not only to hate crime, but extremism and even terror. There is no difference between the rhetoric in the Hamas Charter and the rhetoric that is on display in these videos. 
they are utterly hateful, they are violent, and they are a threat to both Jews and non-Jews in this country. There is a real risk of more than just one person being encouraged by this rhetoric to go out and take action on the streets. And we've seen how bad that can be in the past. Talk TV has confirmed that police are assessing video evidence from five of the seven mosques we've highlighted. The Charity Commission is also assessing complaints about those which are registered charities. In a statement, they said, We are aware of a significant number of serious concerns which largely concern allegations of anti-Semitic or hate speech. We're assessing them and if there has been any wrongdoing, we'll take action. Talk TV reached out to all of the mosques and figures featured in this report. Redbridge Islamic Centre declined to comment directly to us, but previously said it launched an immediate investigation and decided that the imam will not be allowed to address worshippers again until it's concluded. No other mosques responded. Peter Whistle still with me. Um, quite extraordinary stuff, Peter, isn't it? Uh, it's appalling, but not shocking. Yeah. It's appalling. I think what Talk TV have done there is a great service, actually. Although. It shouldn't be the case, should it, that people well, are having to go in. we shouldn't have to do it, should you we? You shouldn't have to do it. The fact is, um, this is the kind of hate speech which is real hate speech. Yeah. Right? The police now spend most of their time going after, you know, if you say a man, uh, a woman is, uh, you know, a trans, trans woman is a man or whatever, yeah. that's now hate speech. Right. In this particular case, um, I don't trust, I'm afraid, like, that the police will actually do anything about this. I mean, this is surely incitement to murder, isn't yes, it? Yes, of course it is. And, and even before anyone had heard of hate speech laws in this country, that was always illegal, mm. you know, incitement to violence right. and murder. Uh, this is pure, what we're seeing is pure incitement to, incitement to, to murder and uh, Jewish people. And the fact is, is that there's been one, uh, in, uh, one investigation, I think it was Greenwich we saw there, and the police concluded that nothing uh, had been said that was hateful or there wasn't enough evidence or whatever it is. Right. This is always um, their response, right? Mm. And I mean, we have see got serious trouble in our midst. And we have had, actually for a long time, because I don't know if you remember, I'm sure you do, back in 2007, 8, something like that, there was a big Channel 4 show called Undercover Moss. Yes. And uh, it wasn't about Israel, so this is all new. Mm. But it was about the sort of things being said in mosques. Mm about gay people, yeah. about women, right. about Israel, yes. Uh, generally about the way in which uh, one should just simply abide by the laws of the country that you're in until you take over, things like that. Yeah. Right? Um, do you know what happened in that case? Is that it was put to the, the police, they investigated and they turned it right round and, and actually went after the program makers. Unbelievable. That went on for making a sort of hateful program yeah. possibly. Now. Who knows what that might happen to you at Talk TV? Who yeah. knows? But the fact remains that this is the stuff that is um, bread and butter throughout our entire country in these mosques, and basically it is being allowed to go yes. on. Yes, and it gets fed into the whole argument we were having earlier about immigration, the rising numbers yes. of people coming to here from, from other countries, particularly yes. from Pakistan, particularly from um, Muslim countries, um, who then get set up in a mosque. There are parts of Britain now um, where I'm told um, the police don't really go very much, um, where there are these radical extremists. And, you know, we're not going to say for, for a minute that every Muslim community is like this, yeah. but there are lots of them, and yeah. there are plenty more mosques, I'm sure, where you hear that kind of conversation. Well, yes, there is a this kind of segre segregated living now, uh, effectively. And the funny thing is that, you know, you go to certain cities and people say, uh, oh, well, it's a multicultural city. Well, actually, no, there are lots of different monocultural mm. areas. Yes. That's quite Which different. Which is not the same thing. That's and you've done a different. fascinating report on that yourself about, about London. Yeah. Let's just move on to, to a couple of other stories we need yeah. to talk about. Uh, Geert Wilders uh, winning the election yes. in, in Netherlands. Yeah. Um, again, a kind of a, um, um, a reaction, if you like, to the mass immigration that's taken over all of Western Europe, a reaction to um, the COVID lockdowns, a reaction in the countryside outside of Amsterdam. Yes, That's exactly. people who want representation. Yes, uh, indeed. Um, uh, people have said, you know, we've got Gerd Wilders, we might have Marine Le Pen in in France, and also there was Maloney, who's a slightly different political yeah. animal in Italy. The fact is they all have a particular system of, gut, of election, which is PR. Yeah. Uh, we don't, we have this first-past-the-post system, which tends to mitigate against newish parties or, or smaller parties. Yeah. Gerd Wilders has been around for quite a long time. Yeah. But... Apparently, what actually pushed him over the line this time to, to, 
actually to a stunning success, actually, 37 seats, yeah. I think, uh, were these demonstrations mm. over Israel yeah. and seeing in the street people actively rejecting the values of Europe yeah. and indeed uh, glorifying terrorism. And embracing terrorism. Yes. But I think this is the point, is that in Europe, and certainly in this country, um, people have not been listened to on these issues for so long. You know, when Suella Braverman says, you know, uh, when are people going to say is enough is enough? Mm. As I said earlier, Mike, people have said that for years. Yes. Yeah. And they are. But nobody listened. They're not only not listened to, they are lied to. Yeah. They are told that, in fact, actually, yes, we're going to get it down. We're, we're going to cut it, you know, never fear. And what have we seen? particularly over the past, what is it, six years, now we're up to three quarters of a million people per year coming yeah. into this country. Um, this is really without historical precedent. And yeah. it's therefore not surprising, you know, that people turn to, uh, to Gert Wilders or whoever else it might be. You know, at least, you know, they are listening to what people feel. Absolutely right. And the trouble is, the reason they haven't been listening is because they don't really want to listen. They don't really want to change anything. I've got a couple of people saying, uh, from uh, the point of view of Gert Wilders getting in, Alex says it would be a change to see a leader who actually does yeah. what the majority want instead of ignoring him. Maddie says, I think his victory is a huge wake-up call to all European countries. Lots of you have got things to say as well about the boss. We'll get to that as well. But before, um, Peter, you have to go, yeah. we want to talk about this one story that was the, sort of the most ridiculous story of the day, I suppose, uh, in The Times, about how... Cleverer people apparently voted to remain well, in the European Union, yes, I... um, and the stupider people voted to leave. Should we take that personally, Mike? I well, mean, I, don't... I mean, I, I take <laughs> nothing seriously when it comes from the sort of Ramona camp. Uh, the guy who um, who came up with this study, I think he's at Bath University, yes. says nobody should be offended by this. It's simply scientific study, which is what they say all along, you know, like the experts are so clever, um, and people <laughs> who voted to leave are too stupid to understand them. No, I think... That... You see, we've had, haven't we had this for about the past six years? Yes. Um, basically, you know, the, the, the basically low status people hold particular views, including that they want to get out of the EU, as you yeah. want to say. Low status people. Uh, huge amounts of snobbery in this. What's interesting to me, though, when I saw this story in The Times this morning, was I thought, you know, you're still trying, you're licking your wounds yeah. still. These people are still licking, they're trying to find consolation for the fact that they lost, right? right? Yeah. And so they can't bear the fact that for once they didn't get their way. And so, you know, this is just the latest one. It's, right. It's and what's interesting rubbish. is that his study says that he found that the Remain voting people were more likely to do better on cognitive tests. Now, cogn cognitive tests are supposed to measure how clever you are at taking in information and kind of, you know, um, storing it and yeah. learning from it, right? Yeah. But actually, there's also a thing called cognitive bias which he hasn't mentioned. Yes. Cognitive bias is what you think you should think and what you think you should believe and the bits of information that you choose to actually take on board, which I think is far more likely to be the case. Well, that's the that's crucial point, actually, mm. because, you see, um, uh, I think when they talk about intelligence, they actually mean people who've been through the education system. Yes. Oh, yeah. Actually. I think they mean graduates and all this. What is interesting is that it's the people at the top of our society, you know, the elites and all the rest of it, they tend to be far more prone to being sheeple. Mm. You know, they're, they're far more prone to fashion. Yeah. In, they will, uh, fashionable beliefs. Yes. They will go along. It's the emperor's new clothes. Right. Far more than the majority of people. Yes. I mean, there is the wisdom of crowds. Right. They're not likely to be rebellious. They're not likely to be individualistic. No. They're not likely to think far separately from, from the people that they hang about with because they don't like to be thought of as not one of the crowd. Yeah, exactly, and uh, that's why everyone in virtually every institution we might like to talk about pretty much has the same view about every single thing. Yes. I think when it came to Brexit, you know, you really actually had to show a fair amount of mental fortitude yeah, absolutely. to go against the kind of orthodoxy. Because yeah. you were being told every day, this is wrong, you're stupid, right. this is wrong, the banks... You're a racist. Are, the lot. Yes, yeah. you're a racist. If you can actually say, you know, despite all that, I'm still going to vote this way, then to me that shows kind of mental strength. It does. I think that's absolutely right. And we're seeing now, literally on the streets of, of very many different places, the reaction mm. to what has been this kind of elite approach yeah. to the EU, uh, to mass migration, uh, to COVID, to net zero, all of the things that yeah. ordinary people actually do care about and yeah. don't want to see happening without them being asked. Um, and it's all coming back to haunt them. Peter Whistle, great to see you.